This is the Maker Carvera, and it's the first CNC mill I ever had my hands on before. As a 3D printing guy, I honestly had quite some doubts and anxieties about getting into CNC machining. But oh boy, ball screws driven by servo motors, automated leveling, automated tool changing. And there is way more to discover on that modern CNC machine. Sounds too good to be true for beginners and advanced users, right? Join me as a total CNC noob doing my first steps in CNC milling and getting my first project milled out of aluminium. Today at 24 7 Printing. Printing? This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Check out the link below if you need someone to do CNC jobs and more for you. Now, I do have a university degree in mechanical engineering. I know how to operate and tweak 3D printers. I know how CNC machines work in theory, as in theory 3D printers are also CNC machines and in theory it's the same, but different. But let's go step by step. I always wanted to get into CNC machining and even planned to build one by myself. Then I saw the Carvera review on the YouTube channel Stranger Parts. After that I wanted the Carvera because it seemed perfect for a noob like me. And now I have the Carvera. Big thanks to Josh, the co-founder of Makra, the company behind the Carvera, for providing the machine and accessory free of charge to a total noob for this video. Let's check out what I've got. The online shop at macura.com offers the Carvera itself for around 5000 bucks, depending on actual discounts. And there is a variety of accessories you can order, like the rotary module aka the fourth axis, a PCB fabrication pack, various bits, materials and other accessory. I got the Carvera itself in a wooden crate and the accessory in an extra package. Unpacking and setting up the Carvera from the wooden box is a no-brainer, but be aware the Carrera is 70 kilograms and you'd need someone to support you to get the machine to its final destination. In my case, a super cheap IKEA table down in my basement garage which I use as a workshop. You'll have a lot of nice opportunities for the act of removing foils. The Y-axis and X-axis are well secured for transport. So there are some screws you have to remove before first start up and homing the Carrera. Which reminds a lot on Batslinger 3D printers, right? The accessory I got from Makara is plenty. A materials package, the optional PCB fabrication pack selling for $299, the toolkit, an accessory box and also the optional fourth axis which is sold for $399. With the toolbox you get actually all the tools you need for operation. The accessory box contains the power cable and in my case an optional kit which contains bit collets and spindle collets for 4mm, 6mm, quarter and 1 8 inch tools. This shows the variety of tool shafts usable with the automated tool changer. Really nice. There is also a stand slash mount for a tablet or smartphone. We'll see later. There are extra bits for colors for the default bits. Backup screws and allen keys. The essential wireless probes, including varying shafts for all possible spindle collets, a USB cable for smartphone or tablet, the handy manual probe, which we'll need to use later, a spare wireless probe, protective goggles for both machining and laser operation. Yes, the Carvera also comes with a 445 nanometers 2.5 watts class 4 laser, but don't expect much from this. We also find a set of drill bits and a kill switch. In addition, there is a spare HEPA filter for the integrated vacuum. Yes, the Carvera also has an integrated vacuum to suck up the chips while machining. As you can see, there is a lot of stuff around the CNC machine like the Carrera. The PCB fabrication kit comes with a set of single-sided PCBs, a set of double-sided PCBs, a UV solder mask roller, a set of PCB rivets, special bits for PCB fabrication, machining dowels for positioning the double-sided PCBs, a set of corn bits, solder mask removal tools, tiny drill bits and a UV lamp for curing the solder mask. Yes, the Carvera is also meant for fabricating PCBs and we'll do that. 
With the included material package, you get a pre-made example PCB and the components to make an example by yourself, a big sand block, a double-sided tape, aluminium plates, epoxy tooling boards, single and double-sided PCBs, ABS panel, acrylic panel, another tiny sand block, a tiny saw and some waste boards. To be honest, it's super cool and it was perfectly useful to get all this stuff, but as a total CNC machining noob, I felt a bit overwhelmed when unpacking some time ago, because all of that accessory. How do I use all this? Will I be really able to learn the needed CAM software to make my own projects? Will I crash and destroy that super nice high-end desktop CNC machine with ball screws, sturdy linear rails and top-notch servo motors? Oh boy, I am not shy to admit it. I had, and I still have, a lot of respect towards this machine and CNC machining in general. Thankfully the Carrera and Makera take your hand and introduce you nicely and gently into this world of CNC machining and more. There is a wiki and on their YouTube channel there are good videos showing you the way of different topics. You also get nicely printed versions of the manual for the Carrera and also of the guide for the project examples you can make it right out of the box. And that's what I did first in order to get used to the machine, software and procedures. So first it is recommended to read and understand the well-made instruction manual. It goes through the preparation steps, explains the dedicated control software and how to use as well as install the tools and accessory. I liked the printed magazine style of the manual a lot and took some relaxed moments last summer to read it. It really creates the want to get started with projects on the Carvera. You can download these manuals beforehand on Makerus webpage. I recommend taking a look. Though it takes an abrupt end at the CAM topic, my personal pain point. In the end that's okay because learning CAM is a rabbit hole which would need double the content to explain it properly. We'll talk about that later in my first aluminium CNC project I designed, planned and made on the Carrera. So if you just want to have things done conveniently and quickly, I recommend to go for the services of PCBWay, who thankfully sponsored this segment of the video. PCBWay offers a wide range of services like 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding and of course PCB production. Getting a quote for your project is easy. Upload a file of your design, specify the parameters and you're ready to go. Check out the link below in order to go the PCB way with your project. Psst! An upcoming 24-7 printing project will also go the PCB way soon. Subscribe and don't miss this! The first example project actually is a super interesting start. You'll make your own PCB. You mill a base out of ABS. You carve the display board out of acrylic and you cut out your own capacitive touch switch out of aluminium. All the example files, uh, let me express it in 3D printing language, are pre-sliced G-codes. But the manual states the used software and you find the corresponding profiles for the Carrera on its wiki. The Carrera is almost fully automated including the changes of the six possible tools on the bay to the right. The example projects use a defined set of bits and tools which have to be inserted into the corresponding slots. First step is to clamp down a defined stock together with the waste board below it. That's the first time I realized, boy, that's way more effort than preparing an FDM print. The Carrera does not come with a screen or any controls directly on the machine. There is only the reset button with an RGB LED displaying different states. You can connect the Carrera to devices and control it using the Mercara's Carvera controller software available for Windows, Mac and Android. The iOS version is still stating coming soon, since months. I only have an old iPhone, a super old first generation iPad Air from 2012, so I am out of this at the moment. In addition, the hex profile of one of the screws for the phone or pad stand was stripped unfortunately from factory. I couldn't get it out. So I choose to use an old laptop over USB, as I had some connectivity issues with Wi-Fi in the garage where the Carvera is located. The Carrera software gives you sufficient control over the machine and lets you load and upload G-code files to the Carvera. In the task configuration menu, you set work offsets, you can set the set probing and set up auto leveling. Yeah, high end CNC mills also make use of auto leveling using the wireless probe. The example guide directs you through all the settings, number by number, click by click. 
In the end, you simply hit run and the automated program begins. What a moment this was. And I was a bit worried about tools breaking or something really bad happening. It was very exciting to start a program. Though there is no reason for that. The Carrera is super confident in everything it does out of the box. A laser pointer on the wireless probe is used to quote unquote scan the margin of the toolpath. In the end, it's a visual safety check for the user if the area is safe for the intended toolpath of the program. Makes a lot of sense and that's actually helpful for newbie newbie cowards like me. Like planned, it also does a 5x5 mesh for the auto leveling. And we change automatically to the first milling tool, a 30 degree 0.2mm wee bit in order to craft the conductor tracks. After cleaning with isopropanol and quote unquote polishing the surface with the sanding block, I applied the soldering mask and I guess I failed there concerning thickness because the included UV lamp was not powerful enough to cure it. It was midsummer back then, it was hot and super muggy, we had to open the garage door and the only solution we could think of was to use the curing lamp normally used for resin prints. The guests and spectators we had that night were an unpleasant result of the boundary conditions back then, but we succeeded. That probably too thick layer of solder mask got eventually cured by this setup. After using the expensive solder mask removal tool and automatically changing to a 0.8mm corn bit for the through holes and cutouts, the PCB was done and I couldn't believe the next morning that this PCB was just made in my garage. Absolutely thrilling. For this LED light project, we also mill a base part out of the big chunk of ABS. This was the first time I doubted CNC milling as the optimal process for this. Sure, I got it. This is for demonstration purposes. I totally get that and it's exciting to do and watch. But still, if that was a real project and having a 3D printer at hand, I would have chosen 3D printing to make this base part. It might have even been faster all in all. Of course, that's not an option for this sample project. So all good, it serves the purpose. Watching the Carrera doing its automated thing spreads confidence and trust. Same impression counts when watching the carving and cutting out the chosen R2D2 display out of acrylic. Machining the first aluminium part on the Carrera, which represents the touch switch for the LED light, was exactly what I was looking forward to mostly at the beginning. Aluminium milling! That's exactly what I want to do mostly with the Carrera. Aluminium prototypes and it seems to work well. So I had high hopes for my own projects, but I still have no clue how to translate a 3D design into machine commands for a CNC mill like the Carrera. CAM or computer aided manufacturing for subtractive fabrication like CNC milling is completely new to me and all I knew was that it's by far not as easy and intuitive as slicing for FDM printing. So I procrastinated these learning efforts successfully and went the easy way of finishing all the given example projects first. I did my very first freaking laser engraving of the beautiful Audrey Hepburn on wasteboard. Sorry Audrey. And I did let me express it in 3D printing language, non-planner, non-3D printing on a slab of epoxy tooling board. The result is actually really cool. My friend Josh, the co-founder of Maker, was super generous and I also had the chance to try the fourth axis. All of it super cool to do and all this gave me a creative overflow of ideas for my own future projects. And that's what I wanted and had to do finally, my first own project. Also because I now ran out of pre-sliced Chico's, aka example projects. The requirements and boundary conditions I set myself for my first CNC milling project are It had to be functional. It should make use of the advantages of aluminium. It should be a part improving one of my fast 3D printers. It should be challenging with a steep learning curve. And it should enable me to learn the principles of CAM for CNC milling. My Retric V-Core 3 already is quite fast. I already changed to a lightweight aluminium toolhead and to an aluminium X-beam all provided by West3D. I went from MGN12 to MGN9 for the linear rail of the X-axis and I use CPAP turbo cooling. I have Nitram's Malcomosk hothead on board for high flow and belt tensioning is not done on the toolhead but with those two devices on the frame. Already quite a beast, but there is room for improvement. The joiner plates which connect the X and Y axis are made out of steel and weigh around 80 grams each. 
Due to the fact that my x-axis is around 37% lighter than the default one, due to the fact that these parts are also used on the larger V-Core 3 machines, it's worth a try for an aluminium design, along with changing the MGN 12C linear rails for the y-axis to MGN 9H. Designing the part was no problem, but there still was the cam problem for me. So I asked my friend Josh, the co-founder of Maker, what he proposes for learning cam. By the way, Thanks a lot, Josh, for answering quite some noob questions ahead. I really appreciate your efforts. Josh linked me to a CAM example video, which was made by Jason Erdreich. It can be found on the Makera wiki and is uploaded to the YouTube channel of Makera. Both are good resources for tutorials on the Cravera, troubleshooting, maintenance and more. That rather short and quick tutorial project Jason showcased was actually all I needed to get started with the principles in CAM for Fusion 360. Even though it's not needed, I wanted to try out milling from both sides, as I wanted to chamfer all the edges for a nice look. First of all a note, there are more efficient, more clever or just other ways to make this part, but some of the setup I did was to check out features and to set quote unquote educational challenges for myself. So I defined the first setup, which includes the machine profile from the wiki and operation type as well as setting up origins for the work coordinate system. In my case I wanted the origin to be the anchor point 1 of the Carrera. I set up the stock size exactly to the size of my 5mm thick precision milled aluminium scrape plate I wanted to use for this two sided operation. The actual part I designed is 4mm in thickness and is centered in Y as well as Z direction. I used a 10mm offset from the left side of the stock. So I wouldn't need to set any offsets blindly in the machine's task setup and I just could leave it at 0, 0. First operation was to drill the 3mm through holes. The available tools and parameters are also imported from profiles located at the Carvera wiki. I just adapted the available 2mm drill profile to the cheapo 3mm one I bought some time ago. I used the same feed and speed as for the 2mm one coming with the Carvera. It's also important to set numbers in the tool management for the tool changer slots, which are used physically on the Carvera. Geometry definition, heights as well as retracts are rather self-explaining. Cycle is rather important to set like shown to go at safe packing depth for the drilling. Next I wanted to do a phase operation to bring the part to the desired thickness. This was also rather self-explaining to set up. Also with a bit of trial and error using the simulation. For these 5mm and 5.3mm holes I applied a circular operation with the 12mm end mill included with the Carvera. Then it got a bit trickier. I wanted to chamfer all the edges of this side because I like chamfers. So I cut free the outer edge by a depth of 1mm to have clearance for the chamfering tool. I learned two ways to make chamfers watching a video by Mechanical Advantage using the included 90 degree or 45 degree chamfering tool coming with the Carvera. The only difference to the video is the tool, which has in my case a 0.1mm tip. So I applied a 0.05mm offset here, which is half the tooltip, and went with a contour operation like the tutorial proposed for my case. With the chamfering, the milling for the first side is completed. The cutting out of the part is done from the other side, which I fast forward, as the setup is mostly like shown from side 1. In the end, the simulation looked good for the other side. The main clue here was to set a new work origin with a flip set axis. 2D pockets for lightweight, another phase operation to get to 4mm thickness for the part and the chamfering of the already machined holes as well as the pockets made from this side. Simulations look good, program is exported, uploaded to the machine, setup is a no-brainer as offsets are set in cam. Here we go. Let me tell you, starting my very first own CNC program was super thrilling and this emergency button is my best friend. What a feeling! The drilling with my manually set up cheapo 3mm drill. The phase operation. The circular operations for the bigger holes. The 
first cutting on the altar silhouettes as preparation for the chamfering, as I like chamfers. And even the chamfers with the included chamfer tool worked exactly like intended. Awesome! Now, the first side of the part was a huge success. What about the second side? Doing the pockets looked good. The face operation also a big success. Defining the silhouette of the part, easy peasy. Chamfers, problems. Look at that. The chamfers of the pockets came out ugly. And those for the through holes drilled from the other side were displaced. Other than that, my first program was a success. The part would actually be usable for the intended use, but it would never give or even sell this to anyone. Here is a shortcut for the rest of this story, because it did three more tries until I was mostly happy with the result. My learnings. Number one. The face operation takes way too long, and even though it feels flat and smooth, the resulting surface looks ugly with the used end mill. I need another tool for that. So I left out this step and accepted the part being 25% more heavy than at 4mm thickness, for now. Learning number two, and this took two more fails on that. The ugly chamfers on the pockets. It doesn't really make sense to me, but as set to default for pocket operations in Fusion 360, the box for stock to leave is ticked with a 0.5mm value. That means the chamfering tool had to do way too heavy cutting on the pockets. Easy fix, but you have to know about that questionable default option, which still doesn't make sense to me. Learning number three. For two-sided operations, stock size and coordinate system have to be perfect. My reference for X0 and Y0 virtually and in Carvera reality is anchor point 1 on the bottom left corner. This point is defined in the settings of the Carvera and by mounting the L bracket at setup. And of course there is a high possibility of some point X millimeters error versus the preset for the anchor point 1 of the Carvera. Using the manual probe to accurately set 0, 0 according to physical reality revealed that Y0 was off for tenths of a millimeter, which makes a lot of sense looking at the result. This error geometrically doubles when turning around the stock. Some hours later, and with the fourth and final try for this part, I was actually satisfied with the result, even though it was still not perfect for my perfectionist claims. The chamfers were better, but they're still not 100% concentric to the pre-drilled holes. Why is that? When repeating the manual XY probe, I realized that there was a new little offset in Y, which actually might correspond to the tiny offset that's left between chamfer and the pre-drilled holes from the other side. There might have been a tiny chip of aluminium between probe probe and the surface to be measured at first try of manual probing. But anyways, I am super happy with the result and my learnings in CAM. 
So I'm an idiot. Here is Editing Albert who actually checked out Redrick's webpage. The joiner plates for the VCore 3 are actually made of 6061 aluminium at 4mm thickness. That means weight saving with my CNC parts are only around 3 grams per side. Not worth the change on the printer, but it was worth the learning challenge. That one wasn't a classic comprehensive review. It was my journey as a noob with an unrivaled, modern and automated CNC machine. Even though I enjoyed this exciting journey a lot, there are negatives I want to point out. There is no remote access from the browser possible, like we know it from Octoprint, Fluid or Mainzel in 3D printing. Also, there is no camera included to observe the process remotely. Quite common in the 3D printing universe. There is no permanent mount provided for the kill switch. There are no direct controls like a touchscreen on the machine and there is still zero support for iOS devices. Now, is the price of around 5000 bucks a negative point for the Carvera? First of all, you get a lot for the money. A lot of automation, a lot of sturdiness, a lot of confidence as well as reliability. You get a ton of accessory, well-guided example projects and tutorials to get started as well as educated out of the box. For a beginner like me, the Carvera was a convenient but exciting journey into CNC machining and to learning CAM for CNC milling. What I learned especially is, because I honestly had some anxieties there, learning new topics like CAM, the slicing for CNC machining is often way less difficult than anticipated. You just need to take a start to get into it. So is 5000 bucks much money? Yes, it absolutely is and it needs to be spent wisely. Is 5000 bucks too much for the Carvera, accessory and that guided experience? Absolutely not. This machine is unrivaled, absolutely worth a recommendation and the best package for the money out there. There is zero hesitation or any doubts for me to put an affiliate link down below. Use it to support 24 7 printing. Thanks for watching and sharing your thoughts in the comments. That's my personal reward. Also, thanks for liking this video and spreading the word. Make sure to be subscribed. More CNC content incoming. Obsession started.